Hello and welcome to LA Currents. I'm Saida Pagan. For more than a decade, the Ebony Repertory Theater has been showcasing the very best in African American stage performance. Ebony Repertory is the resident company and operator of the Nate Holden Performing Arts Center located along Washington Boulevard. Well, today we are very honored to have two extremely influential individuals in the history of our city, former state senator and city council member Nate Holden, founder of the Performing Arts Center, and Ren T. Brown, an award-winning performer of stage and screen, a director, producer, and co-founder of the Ebony Repertory Theater. Thank you both for joining us. Indeed, my pleasure to be here. It is my pleasure. It was so important, I'm assuming, to keep that theater and Performing Arts Center for the community. Ren, tell us about the history of that part of Los Angeles with regards to African-American performance. That community is rich, rich, rich in history regarding the theatrical arts. It became the Ebony Showcase Theater in 1966 under the leadership of Nick and Edna Stewart. They had founded the Ebony Showcase Theater in 1950 at another location here in Los Angeles and they purchased that property in 1966. I'm a fourth generation Angelino. My great grandmother was born here in 1890 at 24th and Maple. Her grandparent, her parents were married here in 1882. I was born 150 yards from the front door of the Nate Holden Performing Arts Center. I walked past there every single day of my life to go to grammar school, to get a hamburger, to get my hair cut, to go to middle school with all of my siblings. I have four brothers and a sister in my entire neighborhood. And Mr. Stewart, Mr. Nick Stewart and my grandfather, Troy Brown, they were in Swingin' in a Dream on Broadway together in 1939. So it had been a theatrical corridor for many, many years. And when I was a child of about six years old, it was the first marquee I had ever seen. And so when it came to the founding of the Ebony Repertory Theater, I named it in honor of the first marquee I'd ever seen. Let me just say, yes. it was named Nate Holden by the community, not me. Uh, Good it, idea, though. <laughs> yeah, when it was finished, I uh, wanted to name it Ebony Showcase and, and talk to the family about that. They said, no, it's our name and we're going to keep it. Why is it important for the African-American community to have its own theater, to see its stories being told on the stage? Because often the narrative is just written by the dominant culture and the narrative is often poorly written about communities of color. And so when you can see yourself as whole, when you can walk into a theater and you can see a play where your mother or your grandmother or one of your siblings is represented, though that is not that individual on the stage, you know that, you intellectually know that, but there is a kinship immediately. There is an understanding immediately and it's vitally important because when you're able to see yourself as whole, then you're able to exit that theater chamber and to treat someone with another kind of intentional civility. You're, you feel better about being a human being. Would you Gen like to add to that? It generates pride. That's, that's very important. Uh, when you know that your story and the community story is being told and it's on stage, it reminded me when I was a kid, if I went to the movie and I didn't see any people of color in the movie, sometimes the butler, the chauffeur, the maid, Nothing outstanding. So it, it, it said to the community and to the general public, that's what you do. You're the butler and you're the maid and you're the chauffeur and that's it. When I was a kid, we had one day a week we could go to the movies, African Americans. And if you did, you have to sit downstairs. And when I would see uh, the, those movies and obviously we were not represented. But at the time, they, the African American Performers were making movies, black movies, cowboy movies, okay? And when I said, now we have an opportunity to upgrade that, and now I'm a city council member. And this is my challenge, this is my time to make it happen. And so when you're given the opportunity, I talked to my friends in Washington and able to get the funding uh, to create the Nate Holden Performing Arts Center, and that's so it is today. Now tell us why you began your theater company. I began the Ebony Repertory Theater uh, born of necessity, 
Uh, when you talk about cultural specificity, particularly in the 500 square miles that is Los Angeles, we had never had a professional performing arts center from an African-American perspective. We're talking about professional, where artists are paid a living wage. We have the East West Players, we have the Latino Theater Company, but there was never a professional African-American theater company in the city's history. So we are the first and only African-American equity theater in the city's history. Actors' Equity was founded in 1913, and we were founded in 2007. So we're very proud of that distinction, and we felt it necessary to have our community see itself as whole to put things on the stage that really represented the diversity and the demographics of the community. And so it was out of necessity. I still, I have lived in the 10th district my entire life. And as I drove past watching the cornerstone placed on the new theater, I drove past and you know, just kept coming to me that I hope that this is not a white elephant. And I had something residing in me uh, that said, if, if I have an opportunity you know, to really, really, really put some culture into that building. That's what I want to do. And it ties to our mission of wanting to have diverse, high standard professional performing arts. And so that's how it came about in my spirit. And I grabbed together a kitchen cabinet of six people who supported me tremendously. And uh, the advent of the Ebony Repertory Theater happened in June of 2007. What do you believe the mission was? Or what did you believe the mission was at that time? That the community should have their own theater to be identified with the African culture. And Wren stated it so perfectly uh, because that's what he's brought to the Nate, uh, Nate Hill Performing Arts Center. And the community is just so excited when they go there. When I'm in the, in, out in the community, people come to me and they say, I oh, was at the theater. We enjoyed the play, we enjoyed the performance. That's what it was for. That's their way of saying thank you. No matter how hard you work, what commitment you make, to make to provide that facility for the community, all I want is saying, I enjoyed the theater, I enjoyed the play, and it's, and it's going to go on for years. How do you determine what goes on your stage? How do you determine which performances to to bring to Los Angeles? Firstly, I must say, I call Senator Holden. I call him Councilman Emeritus. Uh, he's been such a joy in my life and such a supporter uh, of mine. And so anything that we do, I wanted to represent his name well, because he represented his district and his, his constituency so beautifully throughout his 16 years in city council particularly. So I always want to do high standard work where we walk into a theater chamber that bears his name. As the producing artistic director, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, my taste and my choice that way. Uh, most of the people we put on that stage are in Los Angeles. Every now and again we will bring someone from out of state, but it's primarily pulling from the pool of great art artists and great thinkers in the Los Angeles community. But it, it's really kind of been the journey of my life, uh, being greatly impacted by brilliant minds from a lecture series perspective. Being, I mean, I've seen over a thousand plays in my life. Uh, I've participated in so many plays as an actor. Uh, I've now directed several plays and I, I certainly have produced many more. So it's really about uh, my taste and my aesthetic uh, as the producing artistic director. Do you have groups of school children coming in from time to time? Oh, we give away scores of tickets to every run of every show so that the youth can come and participate in the work that we're doing. And how do you feel about that, having the kids come and participate? I love it. That's the idea. In fact, I drive by the theater from time to time, and they have dancing groups there, just practicing, rehearsing, and so on for the performances that they're going to put on at some other location, perhaps. But uh, the kids are our future, and uh, many of them are dedicated to the arts. They just don't have a chance to display their talent. And so it's important to me to know that uh, this facility is a location where they have an opportunity to do that. And Mr. Ren Bryan is making sure that it's available, the doors are open, they can come there and train. One last question, where do we find more information? www.ebonyrep.org, 323-964-9768.